Hi, I'm Jerry Job, and today's tutorial is on matte masking in iColorama. It's a new feature that allows you to pull a figure out from the background. So in order to show the difference between the figure and the background, I'm going to use a preset gradient. And I'm going to make that a green so that I can use it in chroma key later on. I hit in the middle of the green on the color bar and then on the right hand side in the center for a nice saturated mid-tone green. I bring up the brush mask and there's a new button called matte. It's over there next to lazy. It brings up this window with four buttons. Original, matte, apply and cancel. I tap the matte button and it gives me a first cut at this mask that would mask out the figure. I accept that. Uh, there's a little difficulty with the recording here, uh, but what I'm doing now is zooming in and uh, touching up that mask. I have to fix where things are wrong around the edges of the figure. I'll lower the opacity so I can see more of the background that I'm trying to get rid of. And then I will paint over the green parts that leak onto the figure and erase those portions that are outside that I need that uh, have some color to them that I need to put the green over. So you can see I'm doing that here. I tap the zoom button so I can go in and get right up close to the edge. And then I'll work my way around the outside of the figure uh, which is myself trying on some new glasses. And as you zoom, use the zoom button to move around and uh, change between paint and erase, you're going to have to keep track of all this because sometimes you are trying, you end up painting in when you're trying to erase or erasing when you try to paint. So I can see that there's some of my hair that I need to catch up here, and there's also a portion of the glasses. Uh, the frame of the glasses that I need to do. So I'm going to touch the limits button over at the right hand side of the brush toolbar and uh, that allows me to limit the mask to what I'm painting around the sides. So you can see here I'm sort of touching right along that frame there and it just masks out that portion. There's a white section here where the frame sort of breaks because there's a highlight that sort of breaks the frame. You can see that. And I'm not going to want that to be part of it, that white, so I'm going to continue on. I uh, touch the zoom button and uh, start going around the edge. Now I could try and get the hair, um, individual hairs, using the limits brush, but um, I don't think that's really necessary in this case, uh, so I will just use a soft edge brush and go around the edge. Uh, there are some things that I want to pick up, there are some things that don't. I don't want to pick up. If I go too far, I can switch to erase and erase por portions of it. All along the top here it looks fine. I'll continue around and, oops, I had it in erase and now I need to go back and paint. Uh, so I paint around the edge, pick up a little more, um, and uh, here's some that didn't get taken, so I need to erase that white around the edge. Make sure that you get everything that's green on the inside, uh, paint that out. So I'm painting that out, and then uh, continue on. Uh, there's a section here that didn't get quite read well. The highlight on my on the right side of the image uh, didn't get masked out correctly. So I'm going along that and uh, allowing me to see that highlight. A little bit here along the top of the shirt. And then I am done. So now I've increased the opacity, you can see that I've got a, a cutout image, and I can save that off as a chroma key image that I can then drop into any other picture later on. 
But the mask is not only can be used for that particular for function, it can be used to handle the inside and the outside of this figure uh, differently. So first of all, I'm going to invert the mask, and then I'm going to perform a few f functions on it. First of all, flow and uh, simplify at very low opacities to help me uh, get rid of some of the jaggeds, the JPEG artifacts uh, that are part of the uh, figure. Then I'm going to apply a little contrast by going into Adjust Tone Lab 4 and uh, apply a little contrast and then use the Vibrance saturation to uh, increase the saturation, make it not quite so uh, washed out. So there's vibrance, I add a little bit of saturation. Okay, so now I'm going to go back and I'm going to flip the uh, brush mask once again, hit the invert button again, and now I can deal with the outside of the figure. I can replace the background with an abstract, here I'm moving the abstract around to sort of go, but I, I'd like to try and do something else with it. So let's uh, take a picture, uh, use a picture that I've got of the front of my house. And so this is uh, showing that it's only applying to the part of the image that's outside my figure, my uh, person right there. And uh, now I can apply that and then treat the outside. I also like to put a little bit of coherence, about 50% of coherence uh, on that and uh, increase the uh, saturation a little bit with an adjust vibrance. Let's see, yeah, adjust vibrance increase the saturation a little bit, but not too much. Those red leaves really pop out. Now I'm ready to just save off the mask. I've done a lot of work on the mask. I'm just going to export the mask so I can have it, but then I'm going to remove it so I can deal with the whole picture at once. Before I do that, let me deal with the inside. I've inverted the mask, and there's a, it's too light on the on, on the left side of my figure there. So uh, I'm going to use a burn brush just on the outside of that. I make a couple of strokes and uh, I can adjust the opacity on it to what I like and I accept it then. Okay, so now I've exported the mask and I've removed it. Now I can deal with the picture as a whole. And what I'm going to want to do first is uh, apply through um, Effects Blend, what I think of as a shaped spotlight. and do Effect Blend. I've got a group here that I call Leaks, and I have this. This is sort of a shaped spotlight, a blurred light on black. And I apply that in overlay mode, and you can see it's sort of a... Uh, that's too intense. I'm going to bring the lightness down and then bring the opacity down and only bring it in at about... Uh, 40-45%. And then I'm going to apply a glow, effects glow to the whole thing at low opacity. And, um, oh, well, nope, let's, I'm going to do sharpen, and I sharpen three, and I do that at about 50%, and then I do a raise let some of these uh, lines pop out, and I do that at a low opacity. At this point, um, I'm ready to save that off, but I want to show you how to apply a chroma keyed figure. So I'm going to go into Effects Chroma and bring up that image that I've already saved off with the green background. I make a mistake here and pull up the wrong thing, the mask, first. But then I add the uh, figure with the green background, flip it horizontally, shrink it down, and I can put here. So next time, enjoy.